I had a great trouble to do movies in Italy because even if it was a moment of great economic boom, Italy, in Italy there was such a, a smell of corruption yeah. and uh, everything which goes with corruption, which is especially cynicism, which I didn't feel inspired. So I said, I want to go as far as possible. In fact, a year ago when this trial started in Italy called Clean Hand, you know, the judge yes. in Milano. Yes, oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought I wasn't so wrong about the state of my country. Yeah. So I went as far as possible. I went to China, and that was the first experience in the East. And I've been completely, um, um, how can I say, victim of a, a kind of oriental temptation. Now that you've completed this trilogy, mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, I, I want to go back to Italy. Um, even though the political tenor there is quite different from one that I would think that would appeal I mean, to you. I mean the, Berlusconi the, is not your <laughs> seemingly prime minister. No, you know, Italy for the first time has voted a right seconds, wing. A right wing, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, we always had uh, center, center left in Italy. For the first time there is a right, a right wing. And I think that is good to remind the Italians of what right wing means. It's like if the Italians has lost their historical memory. And to have a reminder, and I think I will do a third part of the movie called 1900, yes. which was ending in 45, between 45 and today. Did yeah. you go into film because you were looking for something to do that would not be in competition you uh, with me. your father? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> caught me. I mean, I started to write poems when I was six, seven, when I started to write because it, it was in the family, you wanted to be a poet. Yeah. And uh, like, I don't know, in a family of a carpenter, children work wood. And when I was 16, 17, I started to think, my God, this is not mine. This is not my language. This is not my expression. It's my father. Um, and I've been given a 16 mil. I was 16, so 16 mil, 16 years right. old. And I did, I've done my little first 10 minutes um, film. And I, then I was sure I would have been a film director. And uh, um, a friend of my father was Pierpaolo Pasolini. Yeah. And um, I remember that the f in 1960, he, he did his first film. He met me and said, you want to do a, a movie? Why don't you come with me? Uh, you will be my assistant. And that was a fantastic experience to see Pasolini, who was a writer, becoming a film director, while I was already a cinephile. I mean, I was a movie goer. He wasn't. And so I saw Pierpaolo inventing cinema. It's like seeing... Griffith. I mean, it's like yeah. seeing somebody who discovers. Like T.W. Griffith, yeah. Yeah, uh, like, like discovering cinema. So Pierpaolo once said, said, let's put down the Dolly track. And that was the first Dolly of history of cinema because it was done by somebody who, who didn't have a, a cinema uh, experience. And that was extraordinary. I remember meeting uh, Jean Renoir yes. in uh, um, uh, something like ten, um, uh, 20 years ago in 74 in Hollywood. He was 80 years old. He was an incredible mind about cinema because he was speaking uh, like Godard. So he, he had our experience in the 30s. Anyway, he told me something. He said, il faut toujours laisser la porte ouverte. You have always to leave the door open on the set. One door open, he said, because somebody can come in. You weren't expecting. And uh, that is life intruding into cinema. And this is very important. So to balance always um, the fiction and life, in fact, for example, the performance of Marlon yeah. in Last the, Time, yeah, it's, quite, it's, quite it, it's, it's very much um, behind the mask of Marlon, behind the kind of actor studio uh, mask that we have seen in all his movies. So uh, I, 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 I told him uh, just two months ago, I met him again, um, that I thought that there was a lot of himself. And he smiled at me, you think that it was really me? <laughs> yeah.